we started to think very seriously about how we could define the third dimension. We could get an image in two dimensions, but uh, it needed uh, to do that. It needed really to have some sort of symmetry along the third axis. And obviously for a, a proper imaging technique, you, you really need to be able to look at a thin slice. So we started thinking uh, hard and long about how you could define a slice. And when I say we, I mean uh, Peter Grinnell, myself, and Alan Garraway, because by then uh, we'd managed to convince him uh, that there actually was something in imaging. So we worked uh, together, and uh, he had, uh, Alan had actually uh, come up with a way of defining a slice using multiple pulse, uh, a multiple pulse technique. And um, so uh, uh, it, th this was written up, and before it was published, um, Peter Grinnell and I had independently come up with two other ways of defining a slice. And we told, we, we told this to um, Alan Garraway, and we were sharing the machine, you see, and Alan wanted the machine, the uh, NMR machine, to do his slice selection. And then, you know, I said, well, we would like to have the machine for a few days to do our slice selection. And when we got our results and he got his results, we had a meeting of all three and um, decided between us maybe the sensible thing to do is to publish as a single paper, and um, which is what we did. And that paper, I think, the uh, was authored with, um, I believe Alan was the first author, Alan Garraway, Peter Grinnell, and myself. So that was the slice selection paper. Well, you had to switch, in any of the imaging techniques, you had to switch uh, the read gradient. So you're defining three axes, trying to anyway. So the first thing is to define a slice. So that's one axis. And there is also a gradient associated with that slice selection. And then having defined uh, a slice of material, you then uh, start to look at that decay uh, that you've created, that free induction decay. You start to look at that in an, another gradient and then a third gradient. So you can define the image uh, thin slice and then the two axes and all the techniques work like that they're not as as fast as some of the techniques but you know whichever way you look at it whether it's um, uh, you know f f Fourier zygmatography or whatever they all have to define three slices it wasn't too long before we were able to uh, get rather nice line scan images. So we were taking a line at a time rather than a point at a, point at a time. And uh, one of my students, actually the first, my very first student in uh, imaging, was a chap called Andrew Maudsley. And uh, he had started with me, um, well, I, I'm not exactly sure whether he started on imaging. I think he had, actually. Uh, and during his second year or so, uh, we had evolved to the point in our line scanning technique that uh, I uh, one day suggested that one of us should actually try to image our finger because we had a very small coil and we could just about get a, a finger in. I was very concerned in those days that um, line scanning, uh, which you know was faster than point scanning, but line scanning was still too slow. I mean, t to get these finger images, it took something like about 10 or so minutes per image. And I felt that that was you know, a little bit too, well, not a little bit, a lot too slow. I mean, I envisaged um, doing imaging much faster, but I couldn't see how to do it in those very early days. But then I, I had this uh, sort of brainstorming session, uh, which um, went on for weeks, I suppose, you know, where I was thinking how, 
how we could improve the uh, imaging and uh, the imaging time. And of course, um, I knew that uh, you could get a set of spin echoes. This is back to Owen Hahn again. Um, you could get a set of spin echoes if you put in pulses, a sequence of pulses very quickly, you could get a whole set of spin echoes. And I mean, that was common knowledge, of course, at the time. Uh, but the question is, could I use that in any way uh, to uh, produce a very rapid image? And the idea uh, slowly occurred to me that maybe uh, one could do something along those lines by applying, uh, getting a set of spin echoes and at the same time applying a gradient, uh, encoding gradient along so that uh, as the spin system evolved, uh, the first echo would uh, evolve in a certain time in this gradient. The second echo would evolve uh, a little bit further in the same gradient, the third echo. So it was a spin echo sequence, but with an additional gradient applied. And how could I bring this about? And I wrestled with this for weeks, actually. And the breakthrough came, actually, uh, on my way home from lunch one day and uh, there used to be, well there still is actually, a route that goes uh, around Beeston um, and on that route round I got held up at the traffic lights and that's where it suddenly occurred to me while I was waiting for the lights to go red uh, so suddenly, you know, it came in a flash it really did happen that way it suddenly all came together and uh, that was it. It involved a little bit of mathematics, so I uh, worked it out to my satisfaction. And shortly afterwards, um, when I'd done this, uh, there was a, a conference convened by Raymond Andrew of all the interested parties in imaging. And we had people from Aberdeen, uh, Richard Ernst came over, uh, and um, all the Nottingham people were present and uh, at this meeting. And I gave uh, a paper. I mean, we were all asked to give papers, you see, and uh, I decided that um, I wouldn't talk about the stuff that was well known. I'd, uh, you know, try this new, t new idea on them. And I spent about a half an hour going through it. But it was a bit mathematical, I have to admit. And uh, it really left the audience uh, dumbfounded. I mean, they uh, either didn't understand it or did, and but had no comment. I mean, normally at question times, you know, people are saying, oh, and how about this, how about that? But there was nothing, uh, not even from Richard Ernst. Uh, and I was very surprised. You know, I might as well have spoken to myself, really. And... Uh, but that was the technique which used spin echoes and looked at a whole plane of material in one go. So I called it Echo Planar Imaging, EPI, and that name has stuck. And uh, of course in those days we hadn't actually produced an image, it, this was pure theory. But um, shortly after that uh, I put quite a lot of experimental effort in to try to produce an image by EPI. And uh, that was it. It started a new, uh, a very, very rapid technique. It was very hard, I have to say, for people to grasp. <laughs>